is up you guys? Welcome to another video. If you're new to my channel, my name is Armon. I'm a Toronto-based deep and progressive house DJ and producer. And this YouTube channel is aimed at getting you guys to bring your DJ skills up to the next level. If you're a beginner or intermediate level DJ, hit subscribe to keep up to date with all of my DJ tutorial videos and browse around and you can check out the past lessons. First of all, to the current subscribers, sorry it's taken me so long to get this video up. I'm gonna try and be more regular with my updates going forward. One of the things that's been keeping me busy is actually preparing music for my next gig, which I'm very happy to announce is gonna be my first ever international DJ gig. So I'm very excited about that. I'll be leaving in two days for Barbados to play at the second ever Vujade Music Festival with my uh, par partner in my side project, which is Armand and Bainan. Here is the flyer some heavy hitting internationals on this flyer. I am uh, honored and thrilled to be on the flyer with them and I'll be playing at a fairly small side stage, but nevertheless, it's a start and I'm very excited. It's my first ever international gig. All right, enough about me. Let's get to today's video. I've often gotten comments and questions from you guys on how to go about organizing your music library for a gig. So what I'm gonna do is take you through a couple of the tips and tricks that's worked for me in the past and it really depends on the type of gig and the length of your set time. But what I'll do is show you what I like to do for a more uh, quicker one hour or 1.5 hour gig versus a more involved gig where it might be say three hours in length or if I'm gonna be playing an open to close set uh, all night. All right guys, so here we are in Pioneer's Record Box software. This is the software most people who play on CDJs like to use to get the music prepared. Of course, the software also uh, processes the music and provides the correct uh, beat grid that you can see up here, which is for uh, enabling most of the features in the Pioneer uh, CDJs. So here you have your collection uh, where you can have all of your music, your entire music library. And on the left side, you'll see all of the various playlists I've made from my various gigs over the last uh, four or five years. So what you'll notice if you look at a gig where I just played, I had an hour and a half set. All I did there was I just threw all the music into one um, folder and you can organize that by BPM in an ascending fashion just as here um, on the CDJs when you get to your gig. So you can at least go through the energy level and if you generally go down playing tracks from top to bottom, not in consecutive order per se, but generally you'll you know increase the speed and energy level of the set over time. But as you can tell, that's not particularly um, organized. And so even for an hour and a half set, you might want to do something more like what I'm about to show you. So I did this when I had the uh, good fortune to open for Steve Lawler at Nest in Toronto last May, and I had a three hour opening set. So pretty long set, had to fill up that time, and I knew that the club would be opening at 10 p.m. and I would be playing till 1 a.m. So between the hours of sort of 11, a, uh, 11 p.m. and 1 a.m., I would be, the club would be starting to fill up with people and things would be getting going. So I got a little bit more methodical about this. And so what I did was, as you can see, made three different playlists, hour one, hour two, and hour three. And so these aren't set in stone, right? It's not to say that I couldn't play a track out of this playlist for hour two at the 45 minute mark, but this served as a rough guide. So what I did was, and I'll, I'll give you some examples here, is the first hour, the songs are a bit more chill, a bit more uh, lighter, not too dark, not too heavy, not overly complex. So let's listen to a, a quick couple of examples here. Okay, right, it's bouncy, it's fun, but it's nothing too uh, intense. Let's have another example over here. Okay, so that song is a bit darker sounding, but it's pretty slow. There's not an overly intense percussion going on. Like the beat is, is pretty straightforward. Then we go to hour two. Let's see how the music starts to change a little bit. And these, just to go back to hour one for a second, you'll see the speed too. 119 BPM up to 123. Only one track is 123. So it's really 120 up to 122. And then with hour two, you'll see the speed increasing to 122 through to 124, but with the vast majority of tracks being at 123 BPM. 
BPM, of course, signifying the speed. So let's take a quick listen to some of this music. Okay, so you can feel the energy p level picking up a little bit, right? That uh, song is a bit more upbeat, and the, the beat has a little bit more going on. It's a little bit more of a complex, uh, percussive kind of driving uh, melody. Let's take a sec, uh, listen to a second example. Okay, a bit darker, a bit heavier, right? And then we go to hour three. Let's see what we've got here. We've got songs from 122 BPM up to and including 125 BPM, but again, the vast majority are 123 to 124. So let's have a listen. It's one of my favorite tracks. Okay, nice driving groove and the breakdowns and, and drops start to get a little bit more intense too in the hour three. Take a listen. Okay, one more example. Okay, pretty dark, uh, funky, funky, groovy beat there. A little bit darker and heavier sounding. So um, I've got to say, like, not to pump my own tires or anything, but this was probably my favorite performance I've ever given live. I think the best live set I've ever uh, given. So I really attribute that largely to the fact that I got very organized with the music. So I've got a friend who actually will not do break, break things down by one hour, two hour, three hour, three, what he'll do is actually get a little bit even more specific and he'll do sort of a folder called intro and then a folder called, um, you know, low mid and then high mid and then a fourth one called peak for really peak hour, higher energy, right? So like if this wasn't an opening set, I would have done that as well. So, uh, okay, what about if you're traveling? What if you're gonna go somewhere where you have a gig and there's a chance you might have another gig or like me, you're going to uh, play in a music festival? So to prepare for Barbados, if you look up here, this is the venue I know I'm gonna be playing at. That's my official uh, festival slot. So here I've got all this music that I wanna draw from to play that set. And I'm not gonna get to play all of this music given the uh, length of the set and the fact that I'm also DJing with my partner, but that's the music I wanna draw from. Um, but then, what if I get to play at an after party? Because there's been some talk of some after parties coming up where some Toronto DJs might be uh, put on the bill. Well, then I've got a little bit of uh, music that's heavier, darker uh, for nighttime. So let's just take a quick listen to some of that. Right, more uh, darker kind of... Uh, minor key song it's in a minor and so I need to obviously add some more music here I'm not done preparing yet but the idea is to be ready for what might happen and then there's gonna be some beach parties maybe some boat cruises there might be slots open for some DJs to play so I've gathered another playlist for more daytime tunes that would be good for people dancing on a boat or dancing on a, on a beach and so let's just take a quick listen to some of these and see the vibe Right, light, lighter, floatier music. Let's check this one out. Right, so nice floatier vibes uh, with some light vocals, good daytime music. So, you know, you have to find what works for you, but I think uh, using the folder approach, at least breaking it down for a longer set and giving yourself some general boundaries for the timing in terms of what you're gonna play each hour is a really key step. 
So, now that you've got your music folders as organized as possible, I've got just a couple other small tips for you to help you be confident and avoid any issues going into your gigs. So, if you play on CDJs, like I do, and you have USB keys to plug in, make sure you don't have just one of them, but have two. I like to use two identical USB keys. These are from Samsung, and they're 64 gigabytes. 32 gigabytes is probably enough for most people's music libraries, but these are a high-quality USB key that are not very prone to failure. What I like to do is have them exactly mirror images of one another, the same folders, the same playlists with the same songs in every single playlist. So if I happen to lose a USB key or I break it or it malfunctions, I have a second one ready to go and not going to stress about that. If you play your music off of a laptop, make sure you always charge the laptop in full before you leave, update your software, that way you'll have no issues when you arrive at the venue. These tips may seem pretty obvious, but believe me, you'd be surprised sometimes how unprepared some DJs can be when they show up. By the same token of having duplicates, in a perfect world, you'd have two sets of headphones with you. Now, you don't have to have identical ones. You could have a much cheaper, lower quality pair of headphones as your backup, but at a minimum, I recommend to have two of the cables. Have a backup headphone cable with you that fits your headphones because often one of the things that breaks first on your headphones is these cables right at the uh, plugs. The insulation takes too much trauma from being bent too frequently and you'll start to hear that crackling noise and usually what will happen is one side of the headphone will crap out on you and die and then you won't be able to mix in stereo sound. Great idea to have a spare cord with you guys. So, as you can see, the name of the game here basically is to remove as many obstacles as possible from you having a really smooth set with no issues. Uh, the less issues you have, the more confident you'll be going into your sets and the, the, ner the nerves won't affect, affect your uh, mixing. So I uh, hope these tips are helpful guys. If you have any questions, just fire them in the comment section below and I'll be pleased to answer them as best I can. Once I'm back from Vujaday Music Festival, you can look forward to a little recap video of some of the, uh, the highlights from my trip. Alright, thanks for tuning in and look forward to see you back here on the next video.